My name is Rapsody, and welcome back to Disco Elysium. Uh, since the end of the last episode, I've done a few things in the settings. Uh, in particular, I have upped voiceover volume, and I've turned down all other forms of volume, and then I've bumped up the master volume again. So the, uh, the speech of other people should be pretty good. I'm going to test it again against this racist. Looking for something, Aunt? Huh? Coming to tell me to fuck off again? Yes, I sincerely am. I'm going to start every episode that I am next to you by saying, Fuck up, racist! Oh, so few games let you say that straight. Alright, uh, I got some sort of a feeling. <clears throat> Task completed. Ga uh, find your other shoe. What the heck? I did that ages ago. Composure. There they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited. On your feet. Like two baby crocodiles. Wait, these don't look like normal cop shoes. How do they fit or discard thought? I'm going to just collect thoughts for a while. I've been told that, uh, that unlike other RPGs, and I do appreciate this being told to me, unlike other RPGs, you don't necessarily want to go down every track in conversation uh, because you can incur negatives as a result of them. Uh, so all of my conversational tracks are going to be guided by my kind of idea of myself in this world as a character. Uh, that was obviously the general idea going in, but I, I always do feel the, the pressure to go through every track of conversation to learn as much as I possibly can about the world. But now knowing that's not necessarily a great idea... I can avoid it, I appreciate that. Uh, I've also uh, fielded the comment about holding down tab to find more interactables in the environment. So I'll hold down tab and I'll check out the environment a little bit uh, just to make up for that. And I've increased the size of the text. Wait, these don't look like normal cop shoes or how do they fit? How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. So I imagine I could have had a thought that was like, I have baby crocodiles on my feet. Where would it be? Where would it be? Apricot chewing gum scented one. Love it. Some kind of superstar, cop of the apocalypse. We've seen things that would have triggered those before. It's like, talk, talk. <laughs> uh, sorry, I need to stop looking at those. I'm just spoiling stuff for myself effectively at this point. Ah, another character to talk to over there, as well as a car with which I can interact. I haven't actually checked this side of the map much at all. Electronic doorbell. An old box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in East Delta Commerce Center. Main hall, Building A, Andro Orlando Air SCA, Artemips Boxing for Young Athletes and Gym, the 24-hour window, <laughs> Emma's Fashion Atelier, I'm not familiar with that word, uh, Fabron's Taxi, the rest gets me burned off. Slipstream SCA, Fortress Accident SCA, Revachol I City, uh, Main Hall, Building B, Whirling in Rags. Main Hall, Building B, Whirling in Rags. Well, that's all the companies in East Dance Commerce Center. I was assuming that was referring to exclusively this building, but Whirling in Rags is over here. Main Hall, Building B. Maybe it's just a second uh, section of the Whirling and Rags. Uh, East Delta Pinball, entrance from Building B, and Empty Card Leaf. I'm going to look at the Empty Card. This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try and ring it. Hmm. This button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. He takes a step back, inspecting the other names on the list. I don't really know what to do with that yet, so I'm going to just not do anything with that yet. It's up in this trash can. There's bottles inside. You can pick them up if you had a bag. I'm familiar with the old point-and-click adventure. Rue de saint Uh 8B. Mail collection box. This post laventuria uh, mail collection box has been heavily vandalized by Graffito. A... Sorry, uh, with Graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. Good mail delivery box. Pat the box. Fuck you, mail delivery box. Kick it. I'm doing that, obviously. Am I gonna have a heart attack and die again? There's a hollow, saddened ring as you kick the Laventuria. Uh, Laventuria. Laventuria. Um, 
mail collection box, it sounds betrayed. In disbelief, even. Damaged health. Uh, endurance. You feel something unnatural in your chest? This is the end of my life. So, this is another thing. This is another thing that I am looking to possibly address. Uh, because I left myself... I have five volitions, so I'm okay on morale. But because I only have one endurance, I will die at the drop of a hat. I might want to get just another endurance. Just to do a little bit more. I'd like at least... For the hat to hit the floor and then the shockwave to kill me rather than just the simple sight of dropping the hat to murder me dead uh let's do the same thing we did last time here okay uh and just in case it's important i will also re-inspect the empty card just in case it gives kutsuragi a little bit more information you know what let's go to the dead body that's out here through the hole. Stuck up in a tree as well, apparently. What? Is that kid just straight up hurling stones at the dead body? I'm gonna keep an eye on him for just a second, see what's up. Yeah, it kind of looks like it. Alright. That's how they look at the ground here. Perception site. There are several footprints in the mud left by work boots. Anywhere from 6 to 12 pairs could have walked here. Uh, get an exact count or what kind of boots. Let's go for what kind of boots first. Heavy workers boots with reinforced toes and hobnails. All over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Lieutenant, workers bo uh, boot tracks or get an exact count. I'm going to go for the exact count first. Woo! Maybe more than 12? No. Eight pairs. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Go over them one by one. Number one, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 46. Standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. Hobnail work boot, steel reinforced toes, 43. Standard work boot, no, 45 or 46. Wait, which is it or count more? I'm gonna, I'm gonna count more because I think getting stuck up in the uh, the size of that one is going to become a prop. No, hang on, I've already labeled all of the different pairs. Okay, which is it? You don't know, it's a miracle you tell the prints apart as is. The cold must have preserved them, count more. Uh, another standard work boot, still reinforced toes, no 44. An aberration, light as air, even pace. Same make of boot, but no 41. Male or female? Impossible to tell, could have been an adolescent. The gait is underdeveloped. I'm pretty good at this, aren't I? You're not bad. It's as if the whole world darkens. Everything else has a thin film of unimportance on it, and the tracks burn in the way of it. In the middle of it. In a strange, beautiful way. Seven. The glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number 46. But the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. And there's yet another standard work boot, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more worn. How many? The lieutenant asks, tracking your eye movements. 400 million. Mm-hmm. He looks at the holes in the mud. I counted 20, so I take it's less than that. Uh, never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. He pointed to his glasses. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? Light step, number 41, shoe, sure, heavy one. I'm assuming that I get to say most of those. Let's go for the first one. A woman or a kid? Could be a woman, could be a kid. I don't think there's any way to be sure. For the light step, yeah, there's no way to be sure, at least from what I've been told. Understood. Anything else? A heavy one. 200? He thinks for a moment. Uh, 200 uh, kilogram imprint. 200? He thinks for a moment. Could it be the combined weight of two people? One carrying the other who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built soon to be dead man he might be right 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely one of them was carrying him over maybe it was a giant it could have been an extremely obese person or i don't know i'm gonna say one of them was carrying him over i, I agree with that as an assessment possibly yes the lieutenant marks down something in his notebook but why you're thinking why did they have to carry him yes they could have used a makeshift stretcher or marched him up to the gallows. Maybe, from suggestion, maybe there was a physically impressive strongman in their midst. Someone who wanted to impress their peers. 
Maybe the character wanted to impress their peers with a display of physical might. Maybe the victim refused to walk to his own lynching. Maybe the victim wasn't conscious. I think that one's probably correct. I think suggestion is leading me wrong here. Maybe the victim wasn't conscious. Even easier on a, uh, to carry on a stretcher or between two men. Anyway, it's for future consideration. What else do you see? An aberration. One soul is smoother than the other. I see. Let's name it the odd soul. Do you have any ideas, Lieutenant? Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor? He thinks for a second. Or maybe a drummer? He regrets it the moment he says it. A drummer? That's stupid. So one of the people we're looking for is a drummer or don't say anything, just not. Okay, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to go back to the default of just reading the response that I'm going to go for, especially because I don't necessarily clarify afterwards which response I've gone for. That's a mistake of mine. Uh, don't say anything, just not. I don't know why I said that. We're not looking for a drummer, we're looking for a group of dock workers. The lieutenant clearly appreciates the chance to clear up the drummer issue himself. He raises his index finger. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out their right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. Interesting. If only I'd come up with that idea. He doesn't even seem to hear you looking south towards the tra uh, traffic jam instead. The machines are silent, all the engines turned off. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Yes, prudent. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant writes down the information in his notebook, then reverts to the tracks in the mod. How old do you think the tracks are? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. How do you know? I pulled last week's forecast for coastal crevasseur. Uh, seven days before breathing is seven days, seven days below freezing, sorry. The day before the day of his hanging was the last warm day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to a tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after holstering, hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed, they are all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. Yes, everything fits so well. Carried him up, hoist, uh, carried him over, hoisted him up, watched him hang. This is easy. Isn't it strange to have your assumptions confirmed like this? This is what someone whispering suggestions into your ear would like you to feel. We should withhold being contempt. The lieutenant's saying something, but you can't hear it. Suddenly, it seems like your tie is alive again, whispering, no, screaming in your ear. What? Withhold being content? What are you, mild to moderately disabled? That doesn't sound like something you should do. Live a little. Everyone, <clears throat> everything on the goddamn crime scene fits like a glove. You should get shit-faced on this goddamn crime scene. I like how vivid my interior is, but could we do something that maybe doesn't involve getting drunk? I'll find a way to get drunk on this scene, I swear to god I will. Well, this is not how vivid I want my inner life to be. I just want to get back to the solving the crime now. I'm gonna go with that one. Horrified necktie. Uh, also, uh, in character. Uh, uh, this, these are not words I would necessarily use myself. Shut up, fuck midget! I have no idea what's going on here, but you should not do anything that horrific Nectile tells you to do. Um, detective? Kim is staring at you as you clutch onto your necktie. Say, everything fits. We should celebrate this by getting absolutely under the hammer in this yard. Or, I'm experiencing a mild malfunction, Lieutenant. Something to do with my tie. It'll pass. Can you hold on for a moment? Go for that. The man looks at you curiously. A beat passes in silence. The wind blowing, the cargo belt squeaking. The... Empathy. The lieutenant doesn't understand what's happening right now. You're twisting your tie, looking sweaty, even by your standard. He needs to say something. I agree, he clears his throat. Our assumptions could be wrong. Better not to have them confirmed just yet. Do you see anything else? You've been through all of it. I wish I could tell you that it's actually eight. Yes. Tell me about the case. Well, I mean, I've never had the conversation with Kim, so sure. Uh, tell me about the case. What do you want to know? Literally anything about it. I can't remember a single thing. Uh, would you say this is a mysterious case? I'm going to go for that. 
Lieutenant considers your question for a moment before answering, no, it's not a particularly mysterious case. Why not? Lieutenant shrugs. The deceased is a security guard for a corporation involved in a labor dispute. It doesn't take a DeLorean polymath to put the pieces together. I just don't see the case getting more mysterious than that. White male in his 40s, what more do you need? Um... Personally, I think labor disputes are very mysterious, or... Okay, so the case probably isn't mysterious, but could it be sexy? There was some interest in this case at my station, but not for the reasons you have in mind. You seem to wish there was... Are you sure there's not some sex angle we should be considering? Good point. Martinez is famed for its occult sex murder rights. We'll get on it immediately. The weary tone is the surest indicator that the lieutenant is being sarcastic. Wow, really? That's mega sexy. Oh, it doesn't have to be a cult. It can just be a sex murder. It doesn't have to be a murder. It can just be sex. <laughs> Actually, it does have to be a murder. This is a murder investigation. But we digress. It can still be an otherworldly sex mystery in your head. With a dark twist, even. Electrochemistry. He's basically challenging you to sex it up with some lurid twist. Don't get right into it. Sit on it a bit. Wink. Then hit him with it. Literally anything about the case. I can't remember a single thing. Maybe you can tell me what you do know to help me narrow it down a bit. The guy behind the counter thinks the union people hanged a man. Then you're not that far behind, actually. Do you want me to brief you? Brief. Yes. That sounds good. Oh, that's a lot of words. Thought I said brief. Three days ago, the RCM emergencies desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinet. A, um, uh, sorry, an anomalo uh, ah, anomalous, ah, anomalous, <laughs> an out of the ordinary caller uh, said there was a dead body behind the Whirling and Rags Hostel cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There's an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistic company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of that dispute. Wait, what does the briefing say who the victim was? Does the briefing say who the victim was? A security guard or a worker of some sort hired by Wild Pain, uh, Pines. This is just hearsay from Martinet, of course. We need to find out the truth. Why don't we know anything about the caller? They didn't identify themselves in any way. The tone was muffled using some sort of a, using a device of some sort. The desk could not identify either the caller's age nor sex. Why hide themselves? There's a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. The dock workers union is the de facto police in the Martinet. Now, it appears, they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. Hold on, and the RCM is. That's obviously our police force. Uh, of course, I understand everything right now. Let me just make this perfectly clear. Our job out here is to find the killer. <laughs> I got a secret task complete. Ask Kim to tell you about the case. Uh, sweet. That's right. Uh, if we're from different precincts, why are we on the same case? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in... He considers the phrasing. A pissing competition? The disdain is clear. The man would not use such an expression otherwise. What do you mean? You don't know. His eyes narrow. I assumed you were in on it. I don't remember being in on anything. I'm, you know what I'm in on. Retrograde amnesia. <sighs> Better still than an imbecilic cop-off. Cop-off? New task, the pissing competition. It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. You should tell me now. This seems relevant. I'm going to let it go and do that after then. Uh, was there anything else you needed to know about the case? Actually, I have all I need for now. I think you should know I can't remember anything. No, uh, no response. He just arcs his brow. He's having trouble processing it. Believing it, even. I feel like I must repeat this. I don't remember anything. There was heavy drinking involved. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? There's a sudden, harsh edge to his voice. Like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. What's wrong with personal affairs? But I'm completely lacking in basic information about this organization we're in. Can you help me? 
This is a medical situation. Um, go with this is. I'm afraid this is a medical situation. Really, the lieutenant gives you a look, thorough as if performing triage. You look fine to me. I'm talking serious, unbelievable damage here. I saw myself in the mirror and I had no idea who it was. This psychodrama is unbecoming of an officer. Clearly, he prefers to. Th Clearly, he prefers to think you're malingering. He cannot fathom that anyone could drink so much as to retroactively erase their whole life. It's not psychological. Some sort of major brain damage has occurred on an unprecedented scale. Then you should consider seeking medical attention. You can use my radio in the kinema to call your station's Lazarus. Was there anything else you needed? Um, I want to talk about you. Me? Yes, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. We'll work better together if we have a little bit more of a rapport. Come on, Lieutenant, open up a little. Or, well, you're right, what is there to know about a lame binoclad? Let's go for, uh, first one. Hmm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? You're wearing glasses. Uh, you don't look like other people around here. Tell me a secret about yourself. Do you ever talk with yourself? I'm going to go, uh, do you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? You know, when you're thinking. Do you ever have, like, conversations with your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. This lieutenant is a police officer of the old school. His concerns are material and extrinsic. I'm going to keep that in mind. But this isn't an old school case. Well, is it not? It kind of seems like an old school case that conceptualization is just telling me is not. I get it. You're one of those old school detectives. How, so how do you know... How do you, you know, tap the side of your head? Uh... So what? That makes you the new school? God, spare us. For real detective work, nothing beats a good notebook by your side. Lieutenant produces a small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. That's where the conversations with himself take place. We all have different mediums. His is written. You're wearing glasses. That's correct. Legendary failure in the uh, physical instrument. You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this, but you can't quite muster enough testosterone. No, I don't. What? No, I don't? I say just observing. I guess you don't need glasses then. You don't look like other people. I'm going to say, tell me a secret about yourself. No. Ask your game. Your brain, refuse, uh, your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse to order. Rather, your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something is paralyzing them. You're sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's eyebrow. The eyebrow is uh, exercising psionic control over you. What's happening to me? Something the matter, detective? This guy's got authority off the charts. Just a flick of his eyebrow, he's able to throw you off his, th uh, make you his thrall. So what can I do about it? Nothing. You better hope he doesn't abuse his authority. There's a lot of it. I'm gonna accept my thraldom. The lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow and you regain control of yourself again. I'll say that's all for now. I'm not gonna go down another part of the conversation. Wait, hang on. Sorry, all of that has gone before. Uh, I'm going to say the, so your brain never chimes in with advice or warnings. I can't say it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. And then, yeah, we go through the notebook track and then five to get out of the conversation. Uh, you seem to be following me. Excuse me? What if I want to work the case alone? Beat it, you're cramping myself. Nothing, just an observation. Going for, what if I want to work the case alone? Detective, if I may be frank, you seem to be in a deranged state. You have trouble remembering things. I cannot let you act in the name of the RCM without supervision until you've regained control of your faculties. Oh, so you're an unaccountable wreck who has to be supervised. You don't have to take this display of authority. You can disobey. Encyclopedia. The RCM, or Rebishol Citizens Militia, is a police force you and him are a part of. A self-organized peace corps of the occupied city of Khorabashal. The RCM operates within a legal twilight, yet its authority is rarely questioned. Wouldn't it even be embarrassing if you didn't know this? I know what the RCM is. That's good. But what if I need some me time? Some you time? The lieutenant considers this for a moment. This is a police investigation, not a journey of self-discovery. You'll still have the evenings to yourself. Ooh, okay. 
So I'll leave self-care for the non-work hours. Please do, he says. We wouldn't want your regimen to spill over into the investigation. The lieutenant is pretty sure self-care is just a euphemism for nihilistic binge drinking. And he's right. What else do I see in this area? Smells like spoiled meat and curdled dairy. A human being decomposes. This kid's ladder is rickety, but still climbable. All right, I'm going to go over and talk to this kid first. Kono's got this! The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. If there was ever anything such as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness. Like a gremlin. Oh yeah, never could be Kuno. Yells the other kid behind the fence. Hey kid, a word. Police business. Right in the dick, Kuno. Get him right in the dick. The children ignore you. Slob it in the dick. So it seems like there are, thankfully at the very least, some slurs that the game will not actually uh, put into the text. I appreciate that. Uh, I almost feel bad for having repeated uh, one earlier uh, as part of the actual text. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be more judicious about that. Obviously, clearly, I'm reading, quoting. Clearly, not me. Just gonna very, very clarify those things. Perception sight. The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes, and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from his body. Stop using slurs at my crime scene. That's not how we do it. There we go. She's coming up strong, throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang with this kid and see what this juicy shit is all about. Juicy what now? I mean drugs. The kid's on drugs. Knew it. Yeah, Kuno. Ride the lightning, Kuno. Kuno's riding this, see? He wipes sweat from his brow and sends another rock flying. The rake, Kuno. You should throw the rake at him, Kuno. The fuck does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. Are you kids siblings? Oh, kid, want to hang out? I'm not a knock. I'm not going to do drugs with a child. Again. Kim, what should we, we do? shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. What forces? You will see. The language these kids are using, pure unfettered id. There'll be no reasoning with these creatures. Are you kids siblings? The fuck are you talking about? He throws another rock. He's calling us f***ers, Kuno. He says we're fucking each other. Kid, wanna hang out? I'm not a narc. No, I'm not going. Look, I have questions for you. All right. Elsa saying the Kuno, show me what she got. What she got there? What she got there? Huh? Show me what she got. He juts his chin out. The body. Uh, I mean, I happen to know just from the text that Kuno is the person I'm talking to. The body, what do you know about it? Shitload, pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Uh, Kim, help me out here. What do we want to know? If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. The usual being, have you seen anything out of the ordinary, or have you seen anything suspicious? Do you know who he was? Kuno's fuck gimp! He picks up a rock. Kuno uses the fuck gimp for target practice! He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. So you don't know anything? Kuno knows all kinds of shit! Kuno's not a snitch, that's all! He shakes his head, clearly offended. Try to make Kuno sing into the popo phone. Do you know how he got up there? Probably climbs. Kuno was busy down the road when the shit went down. So you didn't see it happening? Yeah, Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinet. Kuno was up in Crevachon. He puffs himself up. Kuno wasn't regional. Ah, okay. Where did you go then? I don't know, some fucking... He looks around, trying to come up with something. Mesk? Or... I don't know, some other place. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. There's no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction novel. That's a fictional city name. Night City doesn't exist. 
Why you gotta be riding Kuno's ass? You haven't been where Kuno's been. You haven't been in Kuno's head. You wanna know where Kuno was? You wanna fucking know what Kuno's been up to? Don't tell him, Kuno. It's lame. It's not fucking lame. Kuno's building Kuno City. Night City. Rage City. The City of Rage. That's it. It's not lame. Lame. That's the name of Kuno City, bitch. Get the fuck off of Kuno's back. This shit ain't about that. It's impossible to deduce what it is about, at least for a moment. If it's important, it'll come up later. Focus on the case. Have you seen anyone suspicious around? Just a couple pigs snipping around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Oof. Yeah, you tell the probably slur, Kuno. Looks like you're a whatever that means. The suspicious question doesn't really work in antagonistic situations. All right, I'm gonna bounce. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost in all this slur. <clears throat> uh, I want to discuss the body with you. Okay, got to ask you Kuno about the crime scene. About the crime scene. You kids often play in this yard? Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays his little wooden choo-choo. The fuck do you want with it? That ladder yours? No, it's not fucking Kuno's. It's ancient. Look at it. An evil squeak comes from behind the fence. He thinks you're fucking four, Kuno. He says you climb up the ladder to your magic tree house. Get out of here, pig. Kuno doesn't have a magic tree house. Um, I'd have some questions later. And I'm off. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. He spits over your shoulder and then looks back up at you. Okay, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Alright, let's check the dumpster. The letter R wears a crown. On the ribbon below, the light above descending. Trash container. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says whirling in rags. There's something in there. Not necessarily connected to the case, but still. Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. Trash container. The body is downwind from here. Would you prefer to smell the... Would you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death? Lieutenant, what do you think could be in here? Trash. Food waste from the cafeteria? They lock these containers to keep derelicts from flooding in. Could be evidence, too. Seems like a reasonable assumption. Mm-hmm. He leans in to inspect the lock. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage. Or... Or, Lieutenant? Or we could ask for a key from the manager in the Whirling and Rags. He probably has one. He might also have more information. This is better than the pry bar idea. All right, let's inspect the body now. Feels unavoidable at this point. The Hanged Man. Oh, is this a tarot deck? The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Look down. Ooh, legendary. That's a 3% chance. Uh, the cargo belt twists his necktie at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot and the smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. God, what is that? Why is it so bad? Active decay. The lieutenant raises up a white piece of linen to his nose. It's okay to throw up, officer. No one is judging. He's gonna fucking blow. No, oh, hey, there's the wrong one. He's gonna blow. The cops gonna blow, Kuno. Uh, I'm gonna let go of my nose without throwing it up because it's the only way that I get to continue this. Failed, of course. That's a good roll for a failure. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in through your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you'd expected. More fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Flushing you from within, let it out. That also might just be the healthiest way for our officer to uh, continue at this point. I can't imagine that there's an insignificant amount of alcohol in that. 
You feel a great force ringing you from your stomach. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst. Until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. God. I'm sorry. Fucking corpse. I would go with I'm sorry. It's okay. Happens to everyone. The lieutenant hands you his white handkerchief. Keep it. Thanks. Wipe your mouth. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. You think ammonia would help? Okay, where do I get ammonia from? Ah, uh, you think ammonia would help? If you can handle the headache, he nods. Some officers use it to deal with cadaverin odor. Oh, cadaverin odor. But not you. I can't handle the headache. Okay, where do I get ammonia from? There's freight nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't, he points to the greenhouse. There's a greenhouse there, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of Whirling and Rags. If she works here, she might have something for that smell. Hmm. Pretty clever. Tutorial agent. Having the ammonia is a modifier to the endurance check. Uh, modifiers make checks easier, allowing you to retry them. Ah. I see, I see. Someone's trying to grow herbs in the greenhouse. Let's go and inspect this while we're here. Take all. That is magnesium and money. This winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. A pile of turnite. An inconspicuous pile of roofing material. A turnite. Perception, sight, why am I looking at this pile of roofing material? Uh, I'm gonna roll that. Because it's nice and orderly. Well laid palette. Easy on the eyes. Rhythmic pattern. Calms your mind. Mammals like this stuff. No, there's more to this. You get this strange feeling. What feeling? Hard to say, it's gone now. Feelings pass, you see. Especially the small ones. What is this? It's nothing. Okay, so that's, that's a comeback and check it out later kind of sitch. All right, let's go and find the gardener. See if I can get some ammonia. Do I have anything important in my inventory at this point as well? A handkerchief. The handkerchief given to you by Lieutenant Kitsuragi. One corner is adorned with lace and a tiny embroidered portier. All right, you got anything to say about this? I can't believe it's snowing again. The young woman watches the falling snow and sighs. It felt like springtime, just a few days ago. My partner told you may have some ammonia. Can I have some? Sure, I'm done with it. She takes out a small capsule out of her breast pocket and hands it to you. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. Okay. Uh, ampule of ammonia. A thin glass tube wrapped in cotton netting used to treat fainting spells. Produced by St. Batiste Pharmaceuticals. Note, this is a quest item. You don't have to equip it to use it. Just having it in your inventory is enough. Sweet. I appreciate the guidance, game. So at this rate, I have managed to turn the corner in an episode so far. Uh, plus one for Hasmonia. I'll try it again. It's gonna lose it though. Yeah, fail. Yep, uh, the ammonia didn't help at all, or I think I don't want to be a cop anymore. I'm gonna go with that. Get a hold of yourself. You feel the lieutenant pat you on the back rhythmically. The weight is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You're facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. Seriously, this isn't fun. I don't want to be a policeman anymore. Okay, you said it. You needed to say it, and now that you have, he withdraws his hand from your back and looks you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. Okay. Thought gained. Volumetric shit compressor. We should go talk to the locals. Find someone else. There's something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You've received a thought. Once, yeah, that's fine. I've seen that before. 
Leave. Task updated, but let's go get a thought updated. Volumetric shit compressor only takes 30 minutes to research. Your shit is a part, and it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be the total opposite of that. Together. Compressed in a small area. To achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. Do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brains. It's two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to people. Maybe that'll help. Do I, I, I have no other way to inspect the body at this point without hurling. That doesn't seem to be great for my character. Let's talk to you. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. A young girl with uh, chubby red cheeks waves at you, smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. Hi. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? She stomps her feet to feel warmer. Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. Uh, depends. Have you ever written your name in one? My name is Annette, sir. My mom. Her name is Plaisance. Plaisance. Uh, she owns the store. She's inside, mining the register. Or organizing the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts, her eyes wide as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares! And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signaling that the store is open. She nods eagerly. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. A sudden gush of wind turns the pages of the books on the counter. She covers her face, smiling, but she's cold. You're cold. Can I help in any way? I could help by brutally dismantling the free market. That's what I would say. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to help mom out with the store. She doesn't seem to understand what you meant. Shouldn't you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help mom keep the place running. Isn't going to school more important than this? Mom says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mom says a proper, uh, proper worker is dutiful. And that's how you get ahead in life. How you succeed. How's the business going? Mom says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. Let's talk about this house being... She looks over her shoulder. Cursed. Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Cursed? In what way? Cursed in a way that makes them say no business has ever really thrived here, sir. And they all go... She's looking for the right word. Ass up. She blushes. I wouldn't really say it like that, but <laughs> I guess so. Uh, this sounds rather serious. I should probably look into this or I don't think curses are real. It... I wouldn't lead in to the, the kind of like uh, fanciful nature of that. So I don't think curses are real. They shouldn't be, but they seem real. Anyhow, they say these grounds are doomed for businesses. It's just the regular trading and selling of things, child. It doesn't work out for most people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, sir. Um, she doesn't know what to say. What is this crime business? Crime fiction is about murderers or burglaries or, or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Wait, that's not crime fiction. I need to know what crime is. Uh, sure. Uh, she doesn't know what to say. It's that bad. Point to your head. Crime is what we were solving before this conversation began. Okay, I get it. Crime murder gets the people going. Mm-hmm, she tots. And it's kind of like a puzzle, too. You can guess who the criminal is, or how the good guys are going to catch him. I'm a policeman myself, by the way. You don't look much like a policeman. She examines you, as if to find something policeman-like. Huh? Well, what does a cop look like, then? Okay, then maybe I'm not a policeman, or should stop being one. Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just... You don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to a book cover in which you see a strapping Vespertine officer. He stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. 
Again, I'm trying not to read all of those ones out. They are on the screen, though, because if I read all of them out, the conversations will be three times as long. Okay. It's not your body that's important in police work anyway. It's your point to your head. Head, yeah. No. It's your soul. Your blue soul. Not head, child. Heads. Soul, that mullen guy looks like a hampleman who could respect that face. It's not even drawn correctly. He lacks soul. Flexibility. There are millions of different people out there and you have to get into their heads. Sometimes you've got to be the killer to catch the killer. I'd go with the first one. Bit overly dramatic. She examines the illustration of Dick Mullen attempting to find his soul. I'm not sure I understand. A policeman's got to have the right stuff. An ingrained sense of the law. No one would follow a weakling like Mullen. If you say so, sir, she smiles mischievously. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for your uh, soul. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. The cover image of the Dick Mullen seems to, uh, seems to stare at you with harsh disapproval. Uh, like in the books. I'm gonna go for the composure challenge here. Okay, I'm gonna deduce something now. Ah, you failed to deduce anything substantial. She waits intently. Uh, I'm a detective and I deduce that you are a girl. Come on, anyone would notice that. She rolls her eyes. I am going to continue this conversation in the next episode. Oh yeah, that's right. We talked to two people and threw up twice. That's a whole episode of Disco Elysium. Good lord, this is slow-faced. I hope you're still chill with the pace of this. My name is Ben Rhapsody, the name of the game. has been Disco Elysium. There is a playlist in the description down below with all my content on the game, past, present, and future, and hopefully we'll see you next time.